Welcome to the Daily Telegraph's Formula One Forum. I'm Kevin Garside and with me, two extra special guests to kick off the show. Damon Hill, the last Briton to win a world title. And next to him, Mike Gascoigne, the new technical force behind Force India F1. Damon, last year we saw perhaps one of the, mo one of the best debuts in Formula One. A kid that galvanised the sport in a way that none can envisage. His name is Lewis Hamilton. Your views as a driver on Lewis, please. Well, it, uh, I think that people who've been watching the sport have, have been very aware, not just because he's a British driver, but because he's shown enormous talent on the way up. Um, but the question is always there, how will he fare when he gets, gets an opportunity in Formula One? He was given a, a great opportunity with a top drive um, in McLaren, um, and McLaren were competitive as well. So he grabbed that opportunity he got this year, and he actually completely amazed and, and delighted a lot of people to, to, to do what he did, which was come in and maintain a level um, which was right at the front and the sharp end, right through the season. It was fantastic. And I think if you look at the way that the, the problems that Heike Kovalainen had at Renault uh, against Fizzy mm. early on, all sorts of problems, could barely keep it on the track. Um, the way that he dealt with uh, Fernando was just phenomenal. Well, of course, yes. I mean, not only was he um, it was his, his first ever season in Formula One, but he was also teammates to a two times world champion, a, a pretty formidable driver. Fernando Alonso and a formidable personality as well as we saw um, through the season that that became quite explosive but Lewis handled himself so brilliantly um, not only did he drive well but he handled the politics and and the the the, the potential difficulties which could have the off-track difficulties that could have derailed his um, his his concentration and um, I think it was just an astonishing uh, debut performance Mike Fernando Alonso is someone that you are familiar with, intimate with, when you worked together with him at Renault. How do you think he handled um, young Lewis? Uh, well, obviously it was a difficult year for him and uh, he came out of it all pretty badly. Um, I mean, the thing is, we don't know what was happening behind the scenes. And I think going into the year, there's no doubt that Fernando would not have envisaged Lewis being a threat throughout the year. Maybe the odd challenge, maybe the odd race win. Uh, I think the point Damon made about Lewis's um, uh, debut season. It's very rare that you're going to get uh, a debutant in Formula One go into a top team that has a competitive car that can win the world championship. Um, so he was lucky in that respect. But then you've got to deal with it. And he, as, as Damon said, he, he did it perfectly. Never put a foot wrong. And I think um, Fernando going into the season would have expected, yes, he's going to be quick. We've seen him in GP2, some great wins, great passing manoeuvres. But at the end of the day, he's a rookie. He's going to make the odd mistake. He's not going to be a threat throughout the season. Um, you know, hopefully he'll support him, keep Ferrari at bay, help him. But he wouldn't have expected him to be a threat. And that obviously got to Fernando. Now, I mean, I know Fernando very well. Very private, quiet guy, but a very nice guy. Um, and what you saw of him you know, from the public view of his behaviour at McLaren, that's not the guy I know and not reacting the way I would expect him to react. So you've got to ask the questions, what really was going on behind the scenes? Because obviously we don't know that. Another question to ask, I'll put it to Damon. Do we have to reconsider Fernando, as a, uh, his calibre as a driver and as a champion, after the, the way that he dealt with Lewis? I think inevitably that that, that exposed... Um, not, not, I wouldn't want to go so far as to expose, expose the flaw in him as a person at all, but I think that he, he found himself in a situation, he, uh, as Mike just described, which was totally unexpected, and I don't think he dealt with it well, um, is, the, is the honest answer to that. I think he, um, he may well have had good reasons to feel that he was not received in the way that he felt he should be received at McLaren, and that there was perhaps a, a sort of um, unofficial um, hope to see Lewis Hamilton um, come to the fore. Um, but nevertheless, those are the things that drivers have to deal with in, uh, in Formula One because no, not when I say no driver, but the normal situation is that you have to complete with your, compete with your teammate. And that's the sport, if you like. That is the part where, um, where drivers show what they're, what they're made of. And instead of sort of knuckling down and kind of thinking to himself, well, look, this, is, this is a new situation I wasn't expecting, with, expecting to happen. How am I going to deal with it? Um, and getting on with it, I think he got di diverted and, and, and derailed and it all went horribly wrong. It did actually sort of blow up in his face a bit. Let's, if you look at the example of uh, Kimi Raikkonen, a question for you, Mike. 
He faced a similar dilemma going to a team, a new team, where there was an established driver, Felipe Massa. Although he started well, winning from pole in Australia, it then felt, he, th he then fell behind as Massa began to establish an advantage in the team. He handled it differently. Was Kimi a worthy world champion at the end? Well, I think he was. Um, you know, he kept in there. He dominated the, the second half of the season. He came good uh, when uh, Felipe Massa was beating him. You know, he's managed by Jean Tot's son. You know, he's the, the favoured favoured guy. He's driven for them for a couple of years. And, and Kimi got on top of him, which is what you'd expect a world champion to do. I think if you look at Fernando, you've got to make the point that um, several drivers, you know, David Coulthard, Montoya, have, have voiced an opinion that, that there always is a favoured driver at McLaren with Ron. And of course, Fernando was coming from a position at Renault where he had that benefit. He was managed by Flavio. You know, if you ask Fisichella or, or what about it, he, he'll say, well, I was always second fiddle to Fernando. So Fernando was coming from that sort of closeted environment where he's the favoured son, went to a team where he expected to be that, and of course wasn't. And as David said, he didn't react very well to it. He, he, he let himself down in that respect, and silly things went on. Um, but there was also the background. He'll claim, well, it's not my fault all the spying thing was happening. It's not all the other things that were happening weren't his fault. He's just a driver. Um, so, you know, it was a very complex situation. And, uh, you know, he's got himself in quite a lot of trouble as what he's going to do next.